Welcome back, my fellow people. How's it going? We're resuming back to the Walt Disney Animation Studios tier list. I'll be discussing movies from the Disney Renaissance, the Experimental Age, and the Revival. Hope you enjoy. The Little Mermaid A tier Clemens and Miskir sparks up Disney's creativity up again thanks to a fun-loving mermaid. Ariel is a beautiful character that people love as she's funky and voiced greatly by Judy Benson. Judy's voice embodies the tone of someone who has desires of their own and curiosity. Part of your world showcases Ariel's wish to be in the human world and Judy sang it perfectly. By the way, Ariel did not turn human just to get a man. Ariel is shown exploring and gathering things from the human world. This girl escaped a shark attack because she wanted to have a fork in her possessions. When she sees Eric, she's more interested in the fact that he's human and wants to see what kind of life he lives above the surface. Also, she's a teenager! Teenagers always rebel when their parents don't understand their passions or the people they fall in love with. She was devastated to see her father didn't appreciate her treasures and interests in the human world. At a fragile state, her vulnerability is what makes the eels convince her to meet with Ursula. I like Ursula as her designs are based on my favorite drag performer, Divine. She enjoys taking the misery on unlucky merfolk while looking fabulous. Her song, Poor Unfortunate Sills, is wicked for Pat Carroll's vocals. The animation is brilliant, as they incorporate with actors being life models and how the characters move under the sea. Yes. Under the Sea is a fun song with great instruments joining with bright colors. The music score was composed by Howard Ashman and Alan Menken. They know how to make unforgettable songs and change the game for animated musicals. Eric himself is a good prince. He has ambitions and dreams of his own. He wants to get more out of life than just being the prince and wants to share that with someone special. Also, he's daring as hell. Eric is on the same level as Philip on not being your typical prince and killing the villain in the most brutally way possible. I enjoy seeing Ariel spend time with Eric and finally getting to explore the human world. As they spend time together, you see them fall for one another. The scene where Ariel gets her voice back is so fulfilling. It just makes me smile to see Eric hearing Ariel's voice and recognizing her. This movie has pulled Disney out of their slump and reminded them what made Disney movies stay with people in the first place. The Little Mermaid has influenced many people and researched Disney to get back to their roots in making fairy tales. The rescue is down under. <laughs> I'm so sorry. C tier. This is the first sequel to Disney, and probably the reason Disney would screw around when originality was out the window. It's funny because as a kid, I really loved this movie, but watching it again, not so much. I've got issues with this movie. The humor is pretty flat. Frank gave me a headache with his idiotic actions. The story is fine, but the writers seemed to add unnecessary time to lengthen their movie. I didn't like that Bernard was in the trope of trying to propose to his love, but things just kept happening. Like the movie seemed to forget who Bernard and Miss Bianca are. Now the things I did like about this movie. Two characters that didn't disappoint in humor. Joanna and Wilbur. I love the way Joanna moves in her performance thanks to Frank Welker. I love the use of the Wright brothers as a reference, and a clever decision to make since they couldn't get the actor who played Orville. It was great to hear Bob Newhart and Ava Gabor back as their respected characters. The animation is a massive upgrade from its predecessor. The downfall is, I'm aware of the CG, and extreme use of them during the action scenes. Like I get it, you guys got computers, and computers are the next big thing! Nothing can beat the sequence of Cody bonding with the eagle. It's elegant and graceful to see this majestic eagle and boy form a connection. The moment where Cody was in the air with the other birds is quite wonderful. Down Under has its problems, but I like it mainly for the animation, voice cast, and seeing my favorite mouse couple back on the big screen. Beauty and the Beast B tier Don't get me wrong, I like this movie, but not as much as others. However, I love Beauty and the Beast for what it's accomplished, a simple fairy tale that involves an angelic score, incredible animation, good characters, and a huge impact in animation history. Belle is such a delightful heroine who loves literature and yearns for adventure. The Beast is complex as he spent many years in self-isolation, cursed as a monster, and having his royal servants that are all household items as his company. It can change a person. It's understandable why the Beast is so hard at first, but he means well. When Belle escaped and was about to be attacked by wolves, the Beast saved her. In return, Belle came back to heal his wounds. I like to mention that Belle, voluntarily, became the Beast's prisoner in place of her father. She refused to beat the Beast for dinner, got stubborn when she needed to, and called him out on his aggressive temper. So, <coughs> while he has his own issues to handle, his attentions begin to show once he and Belle spend more time together. It warms my heart when Beast shows Belle his library of everlasting books. He actually enjoys Belle's love for literature. She's appreciated by someone who doesn't see her as a bookworm or odd. In fact, he embraces her interest in reading. 
I like Gaston because I know some dudes who are Gaston. They think they're the hot <coughs> and need their egos fed so bad in order to fulfill satisfaction. The way he's presented, his voice, his muscular body, you can smell the testosterones in this man. The song Gaston is still fun and great to dissect when watching it frame by frame. For Gaston to fall to his death was a fitting end. Don't think I forgot about the other characters. Lumiere, Clocksworth, Chip, Mrs. Potts, and even the utensils are great. They add elements whenever they had conversations with Belle or the Beast, and dare I say, talentedly gifted. The music and animation makes everything better. What else can I say about the music? Howard Ashman and Alan Menken have no right making such spectacular music to fit grand musical numbers. In memory, Howard Ashman contributed to the beginning of the Disney Renaissance music. Without his efforts, the music wouldn't have become so memorable. From Be Our Guest, Something There, and the gem forever known as Beauty and the Beast. The colors are rich, the characters are drawn well, and the scenery and set design is unique. And the perfection that is the ballroom scene? I get overwhelmed with the camera angles. Bell and Beast dancing, and the CG chandelier is all magical. The enchantment of the Beast's transformation and the kiss that he and Bell shared are the definition of a fairy tale. At the end, this movie has built recognition and a place for animation history. Beauty and the Beast is the first animated film to gain a Best Picture nomination. The animated film category wasn't added to the Academy until 2002. For an animated movie in the 90s to achieve such great success and be nominated amongst other well-crafted movies, I don't see why people still have the mindset that animation is for kids. That's what makes Beauty and the Beast one of the best animated movies. Because the cast and crew crafted this project with care, love, and appreciation. Aladdin S tier, S tier, hear all about it! Clements and Miskers back at it again with another musical banger! I love this duo so much. I cherish Aladdin for their aspects and details. With the animation, story, music, voice cast, characters, Comedic timing, investment in a beautiful romance. I don't think you understand how much I love Aladdin. Talk about a great intro for a main character as he escaped death because he stole a loaf of bread. One Jump Ahead showcases who Aladdin is as a character and utilizes cartoonish antics. After all that, an entire musical number. While hungry, he saw that those kids needed to eat more than he did. It's one of the many reasons why I love Aladdin. He's quick-witted, enthusiastic, and generous. Princess Jasmine is quite the character. She's smart, and fun, and beautiful. She was the guest of law telling her that she must be married to a prince, but she wants to get married on her own terms. She's outspoken, stands firm in her beliefs, and doesn't let anyone change her mind. Jafar is a fun, yet calculated villain. I enjoy his dialogue and design of his outfit, and when he finally becomes unhinged, it makes him a greater villain. Now, for the true star of the movie! Why? 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck! With Robert Williams' quick delivery and improvisation, Genie is full of surprises and a source of entertainment that makes this movie a classic. He also provides great emotional connection with Aladdin in expressing his wish to be free. Friend Like Me brings the house down with its animation and captures the great powers Genie has. The animation relies heavily on grand musical numbers, facial expressions, and the landscape of Agrabah. Examples like the intense details in Aladdin's face when he's called a street rat, and the affection Aladdin has when he sees Jasmine at the marketplace. I love seeing Aladdin and Jasmine's chemistry and their dynamic together. I love when Aladdin describes to Genie how Jasmine is someone he admires, and it's so genuine that he starts with her personality and traits with such purity. What a dork. I love him. A Whole New World is the best romantic song, thanks to Brad Kane and Leia Salonga. They don't sing about why they love each other. Rather, they're singing about their desires and opening possibilities to what the relationship can be. The music score itself is my favorite. Howard Ashman, Alan Menken, and Tim Rice pulled their musical talents together to display the events happening in a fun, romantic, or suspenseful manner. Another thing I like is the friendship between Genie and Aladdin. Genie has helped made Aladdin's dreams come true in becoming Prince Ali and also saved his life. Even though Aladdin realized he couldn't be with Jasmine, he still knew that Genie's freedom mattered more. They're both grateful for each other, and their goodbye was a meaningful heart-to-heart. -heart. It wraps up nicely with the Sultan allowing Jasmine to marry whoever she wants, and she chooses Aladdin. It's the full package of a Disney classic as you sing the songs and quote the lines. Aladdin is the true showstopper for Disney that can never be replicated. <laughs> Made you look. The Lion King B tier 
the epicness of this movie's opening as Circle of Life plays. This movie wasn't supposed to be successful. This movie made over $900 million in the box office. Disney would send their Team B of animators to draw. Not saying Team B is bad, but Team A would later animate a movie that didn't fulfill Disney's expectations. The Lion King has stunning animation, amazing music score, and story. It's a musical version of Hamlet, but lions. I also didn't think Simba had really much character growth in the movie and a quick treatment of doing the right thing. Minor nitpicks, but this movie delivers greatness. Scar is a villain who is devilishly entertaining. Disney took inspiration from Nazi propaganda to represent the hyenas marching. It's haunting, but somehow satisfying from an animation point of view. The wildebeest stampede is a key scene that makes Lion King so impactful. To see Mufasa plead for his brother to save him. For Scar to enjoy every last moment Mufasa has and taking it all in to say the most chilling line any villain could say. Long live the king. The pain and trauma all of us felt when Mufasa dies and Simba witnessing his father's fall. Mufasa's death sticks because you see the body. Simba trying to wake up his dad and taking in his loss is heart shattering and presented amazingly with its animation. The score is composed by Hans Zimmer, along with Elton John and Tim Rice working with him. The score embraces the use of African music and instruments. It's booming, beautiful, and all sincere in capturing the tones and emotions. Can you feel the love tonight is consistent with its beauty and the awakening for things? Look at those eyes. The biggest moment in Lion King is when Mufasa makes Simba remember who he is and how he's forgotten so much about his past. With the swirls of the clouds and their colors, Simba seeing all of this and a reflection of Mufasa accompanied with a powerful score is the cherry on top of animation sequences ever existed. A character I love, Rufiki. I love his wild personality, movements, and giving an important lesson on handling the past. The Lion King proved the odds for Disney's intentions and millions of people watching a movie with great elements. The movie has significant influence that will be remembered for decades to come. Pocahontas C tier Remember back to the Team A, Team B situation? So Team A was assigned to draw this movie. Disney was determined that Pocahontas would win them an Oscar. Their expectations were so high. But the box office and reviews did not match their ideals. The things I did like about the movie is the animation and music. Colors of the Wind is a flawless piece with its animation and vocals from Judy Kuhn. Seeing Pocahontas as the Colors of the Wind is my favorite sequence with its gentle touch of detail. Pocahontas is a great character as she's thoughtful and fearless. While the animation is breathtaking, the movie suffers on one major fault. Historical accuracy, which damages Native American culture. This movie cannot show me how Europeans have invaded native land and yet pull the two sides of a fault line. Europeans are colonizers and have invaded and done horrendous things to Native Americans. You just can't do that, Disney. You just can't. Also, the romantic tension between Pocahontas and John Smith really rubs me the wrong way. Pocahontas and John Smith had never had a relationship. Ever. Again, historical accuracy and romance between the two really ruins the movie. Even with great animation and score, it erases what truly happened to Pocahontas. The Hunchback of Notre Dame A tier Notre Dame is a dark movie with themes that I've never seen when I was younger. But there are some issues here. The gargoyles aren't bad, except for Hugo being the most annoying for comedic relief. Victor's okay, and I like Laverne, only because she's the least annoying out of the three, and... Fly, my pretty, fly, fly! <laughs> the song A Guy Like You is pointless, as Quasimodo doesn't even get the girl. Way to shoot down his confidence, guys! Great job! It's one thing to add humor, but it's another thing when you add silly slapstick to a movie like this. <laughs> Okay, now the lust, the religion, the sin, the damnation, the manipulation, and genocide. A man kills a woman who was about to drop a baby in the well, in front of the church! Quasimodo's a tragedy with being orphaned, under the care of this vile man, and brainwashed it to believe his father's lies. He's someone you could sympathize with, which is why Out There is a good song. Quasimodo sings his heart out as he just wants to spend one day out and escape from his miserable life. The animation with Quasimodo splashes water in his face is wonderful. You're just happy that he feels joy for once. Then it's gone when he learns how cruel people can be.
It pains me to see Quasimodo's smile go away. There's a tightness in my chest as he's mistreated and brutally humiliated by the citizens. Then comes Esmeralda, for having compassion for him and standing up to those who are discriminated based on their appearance. Esmeralda amazes me with her heart of gold and courage. Silence! Justice! Phoebus is fine. Nothing special. But Frollo? This dude is nasty, commits various sins, heinous, and blows it all the way with hellfire. The best Disney villain song. My favorite Disney villain song. I seriously admire the way they composed Frollo's sins, taunting him, the visuals, the fire representing his lust for Esmeralda. I love villains who don't hide their evil actions or behaviors. Frollo, hands down, my favorite Disney villain. The animation is glorious with its buildings, lighting, colors, and scenery of Paris. The score has tracks full of agony and bliss. The ending takes his time with Quasimodo being welcomed back to society. To Esmeralda offering her hand to lead him outside, the little girl walking up to Quasimodo and hugging him, it's heartfelt. Despite the themes they display and the really cartoonish humor, it's incredible with its fine details of art, music, voice cast, and the ringings of the bells of Notre Dame. Hercules, A tier. Clemens and Meskers came back for that third taste of the Renaissance pie. Now the muses are amazing! I love that they're telling the story of Hercules and using gospel music was a surprising choice that works. Hercules is cool because of its animation, music, and putting a spin on a Greek legend. Go to Distance is an empowering song on someone who's destined for greatness and seeks for it. Phil is a wonderful character with his dialogue, mannerisms, and perfect for Danny DeVito to play. One Last Hope is a great song for the montage of Hercules getting stronger and better with vast improvement. The queen of all queens, Megara. I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. She's cynical and full of sass while being everybody's dream girl. Her song I Won't Say I'm In Love, which is a hit by the way, also shows the thought process of Meg not letting her guard down to fall for Hercules. She's more than a beautiful face and body. She has layers to her character that makes me love her every time she sways. And Hades, what a character. Hades' voice and movements capture the expressions of being snarky and having full-blown anger fits. I love how the neon and bright colors shine through in victory scenes in contrast to dark and muted colors for when scenes are dreary. I also like the gospel music with the action-filling score. Another great detail to Hercules is adding Greek references to his humor. The ending is rewarding for everyone, especially for Phil, who helped shape Hercules to the hero he is today. That's Phil's point! It's exciting for an animated film with unique pieces to tell the zero the hero story that is Hercules. Mulan, S tier. I grew up on Mulan and I cherish her to this day. Mulan knew the dangers of imposing as a man, but couldn't let her father enter the war again. It's a huge commitment she was willing to go for and displayed in a groundbreaking sequence. The animation is tender to the touch and sharp with its action. Reflection moves me with the beauty of singing from Lea Salonga. The lyrics are strong as everyone can feel seen or relate to Mulan as she struggles with her identity. Who truly is Mulan besides the girl she sees in the mirror? Mushu is the second best comedic character in Disney's filmography, supplying with laughs and support at the same time. I might get hate for this, but I'm not that crazy about Shang. <laughs> I think he's a cool character, but I never saw why people really obsessed over him. I take it back, because make a man out of you is a big reason. A smashing hit showcasing how far the soldiers have come in their training. Shang definitely had the hots for Ping, and no one can tell me otherwise. While the other songs are great, the movie knows how to gut punch you with no warning. The transition from a girl worth fighting for and the horrific scene of the village being a burial site is a knockout moment. The mood shifts, the environment change, and the soldiers witness a terrible massacre had happened and lives were lost. It's quality storytelling. Milan makes daring choices. All of her choices she made were reckless, but all in the name to save people, honor her family, and to defeat the Huns. She follows her heart in her decisions and goes for it. I thank the team for not pushing the feminine power in her, like making her so perfect and flawless. She came out of this as a warrior who believed in herself and did the right thing to protect thousands of citizens. It's why the entire country of China bowing to her is well received. She returns home to give her father the achievement she earned from the emperor. But that didn't matter to him. He's most proud of Mulan for coming back home safely. It always gets me as the rewards don't define Mulan as she's already wonderful in her father's eyes. It's my all-time favorite Disney movie. The themes in believing and finding yourself being told through a radiating character named Mulan. Tarzan C-Tier 
The story is basic as Tarzan has been told hundreds of times. Some characters are good and some are just there. The animation is fine. The 2D is great, but the CG is a bit rough. I love the scene where a butterfly lands on baby Tarzan's face. It's so cute! The chasing Tarzan and Jane face with the baboons was a huge scene that was full of suspense and thrills. The colors pop and shine through the beauty of the jungle, even at nighttime. I didn't care for Clayton. Actually, the only thing I cared about was his death. The fact that we saw it happening and Clayton being mad at not realizing the vines wrapping around his neck before it was too late was scary. I'm impressed on how many tracks Phil Collins has sang and performed for the movie soundtrack. I mean, Phil Collins went off on this soundtrack. Nothing too impactful, but Tarzan still remains to be the man of the jungle. Fantasia 2000 C tier It's slightly better than the original Fantasia. I could do without the celebrities saying the prologues before each piece. I also find it lazy to reuse the Sorcerer's Apprentice because it's already in the original. Let's see what the future generation will come up with as Fantasia 3000. My favorites from this collection are Rhapsody in Blue, The Carnival of the Animals, and Firebird Suite. Dinosaur D tier Man, I was not looking forward to this movie. I saw this for the first time. Yeah, no. The CG is hard to watch, and I understand it was the 2000s, but come on. However, I like the use of the live action backgrounds. Mainly, the animation isn't the worst thing, it's the lack of story and poor humor. I was digging the first few minutes of the movie, but then the animals started talking. It would have been awesome if Disney treated Dinosaur as a silent film with a music score to show the long and tiring journey for the dinosaurs to get to the certain place. I would have loved that, but it's not worth my time. The Emperor's New Groove S tier This is the best movie ever and every other movie can just go home. Cusco is the dealbeat of a main character and I love it. We don't get a lot of main characters who are selfish and self-absorbed. I like Pacha as he's an honest and loyal man with a unique family. Yzma is delightful. She's my personal favorite since she's voiced by Eartha Kitt who I love with all my heart. And I mean Crook is a little angel. The animation is notable for its expressive use of humor, facial details, and architecture. The story and bond Cusco and Pacha take on is funny. And Cusco learns a lot from his time of being a llama. Okay, not entirely. I love watching this movie and it's fondly remembered as a Disney classic without the traditional elements. Atlantis The Last Empire S tier I have regrets in my life and one of them was not seeing Atlantis sooner. I was robbed from this masterpiece. I wish Disney had faith in this movie when they were making it. Apparently, the studios didn't like that the movie wasn't a musical and promoted it poorly. The animation is one of a kind as some sequences brought me to tears. The movie is influenced by works from Mike Mignola. The style is superb, the colors are perfection, and the movements, explosions, landscapes, submarines, Atlantic flying crafts, and numerous details of the city of Atlantis! The multiple layers and levels of the visuals went above and beyond. The story is exciting to watch with an epic music score. This movie has the best ensemble cast ever. The voice actors are perfect and the characters are special because of their professions, personalities, and they're unforgettable. This movie is highly underrated and I had an extraordinary time watching Atlantis The Last Empire. Lilo and Stitch B tier Lilo and Stitch is an original story with great animation, great voice cast, and a fun soundtrack. I like Lilo for having a weird personality and doesn't shy away from her hobbies. Also, she got hands. I think everyone can learn from Lilo and not hide yourself because you like or see things differently from other people. Stitch is a ball of mischief and has chaotic energy. Also small and fluffy. Nani is incredible. She works hard and cares for Lilo despite the trouble she's faced. The movie takes the theme of family to heart. I love the watercolor backgrounds and the way that the waves are animated. Lilo and Stitch is a fun movie that tells you Ohana means family. Family means no one gets left behind. Treasure Planet Eight year. The boys are back in town. First time watching Treasure Planet. I absolutely love the animation, story, characters, and again the animation. It remains to be one of the most expensive movies in traditional animation, with a budget of $140 million. It consists of fluid 2D animation, but CG for the ships, creatures, and other objects. It's noticeable, but I like how the ship looks. Space is also whimsical with its stars, asteroids, black holes, etc. My biggest problem with the movie is Ben. Ben serves the role of comedy relief, and that's it. It's fine for other comedic characters, but Ben is obnoxious and serves no purpose for the movie. Also, there's this pirate who spoke in flagellants, which made me disgusted. I would die for Captain Amelia. She's direct, 
official, and I admire her character design. Same goes for John Silver. He has a complex arc in the movie and his character design is cool. The robotic parts to his body, the way he moves, and seeing his robotic arm operate makes him more cooler. This movie captures emotions with the relationship between Jim and John Silver. It starts out rough, but the two begin to enjoy each other. One of the coolest scenes is when Jim has a flashback of his father leaving, and it transitions to John Silver offering Jim to get on the ship. This movie was a box office failure, but there's a cult following that appreciates Treasure Planet for what it's done. It's a good movie with great animation and a story finally coming to life after being in the back burner for years. Treasure Planet continues to be told and praised amongst many through time and space. Brother Bear C tier I have patches of memories of the movie, but I never finished it. So imagine the surprise I got. It hurts to see Kenai's oldest brother Sika accept his death. He knew this was it for him. I couldn't care for the story. I know Kenai was supposed to learn from the spirits as he murdered a bear, but we'll get into that later. The movie does get serious with those emotional scenes with pieces of fun. The mooses were annoying, Koda was cute, and it made me sad when Kenai had to tell him that his mother wasn't coming back. I'm not sure how I feel about the ending. I get it, but it's not the ending I prefer. The animation is really great. The landscape is realistic. I love the colors when the spirits transformed Kenai to a bear and when Koda ran through the field of flowers. Phil Collins came back, joining with Tina Turner for the music soundtrack. Brother Bear teaches you to respect animals and nature. Also the meaning of brotherhood. Home on the Range D tier the saving grace of Home on the Rage was the animation, music, and the villain. I find it hilarious that the villain's evil plans involve him yodeling and making the animals follow in his trance. That's creative! The animation is good, and I like the colors. Bless the crops Alan Menken came to score the music because it kept my attention for the whole movie. Besides the villain, every other character is either annoying or just there to move the story. And the humor is lowbrow. I say skip it because it's not worth the time. Thank goodness this wasn't the last 2D film for Disney because I would not want this to be their last mark in 2D animation. Chicken Little F tier I had a conversation with my friend who stated Chicken Little was made to be a ripoff of DreamWorks films. I didn't get what she meant by that and then... This movie sucks eggs! Nothing was good, the animation was bad, the characters were terrible, and like the story of a classic fable dragged through the mud with bad jokes and pop culture references. Even the comedic genius of Gary Marshall couldn't save this movie. I will give respect to Zach Braff as Chicken Little because I didn't think that was him. I swear when I watched this movie I was thinking, is that John Mulaney? What did I like about it? Um, the fish. He's the only character that didn't annoy me and his dance moves were cool. I'm hard with this movie because it made over $3 million in the box office. This crappy movie that has the animation looking like the early days of CG had broke their butt. Don't believe anything you hear from Chicken Little because it's not true. Meet the Robinsons. A tier. I adore this movie. This could have came from any animation studio, but Disney did the Robinsons right. The animation is flexible, the story has twists and heart, the characters are distinctive, and the message on trying again and family is wonderful. The jokes are really funny, and the music is also great. The future looks awesome, and I like how everything from the buildings and characters are different in their own way. Meet the Robinsons made me see that Disney might be alright with CG after the monstrosity of their last film. For Lewis, wanting a family to realizing he's already part of one is something that always stays with me. Meet the Robinsons is awesome, and remember to keep moving forward. Bolt. D tier. It's okay. I really don't know what else to say about the movie. It's not terrible, but it's not great. I don't like the story. It wasn't funny. The emotional scenes felt forced, and I got nothing. The animation is good, but that's pretty much it. If you like it, that's fine. But there needs to be some thunder to shake up this movie. The Princess and the Frog. S tier. For our last 2D princess, it had to go to the boys, Clemens and Misker. I take this movie personal. I don't care that Tiana was a frog for most of the movie. I know it happened, and I'm not settling for less with representation because of it. I was 10 when this movie came out. I was at a point in my life where I wanted to be a chef and enjoyed cooking with my grandma. I didn't find a character that looked and shared the same traits as me. Then Tiana came to the screen, and I felt connected. Well, I don't want to be a chef anymore, I will always think of her as my first time being seen. Tiana is determined, passionate, and kind-hearted. 
Once the spoiled prince, Levine will get to see there's more to life besides riches and cutting loose. Charlotte is an overjoyed Southern Belle who basically wants everything. Another thing I like about Charlotte is that she always supports and helps Tiana make her dreams come true. Dr. Fossey, or the Shadow Man, is another villain I love because of his design, his skills of voodoo, and the performance given by Keith David. Lewis is a music-loving trumpeter alligator, and Ray is a fun Cajun firefly. His death was so stupid and I haven't recovered from it after all these years. The animation is sensational. Like their past movies, Clemens and Miskers brought back the feel of the Disney Renaissance with their art style and music. Almost There is my all-time favorite because of the visuals and Anika Noni Rose's singing is beautiful. The relationship between Tiana and Naveen is cute. I thought it was sweet that Naveen made a ring for Tiana and minced vegetables. To have someone wanting to help their partner's dreams come true and having another person realize their life isn't complete without their partner is devotion at its finest. Seeing Tiana and Naveen back as humans is a magical sequence and I love the outfits they're wearing. Also, Naveen is the smoothest prince in Disney. And I'm about to do it again. The movie gave me a personal value and is one of my favorites from Disney's filmography. This movie has eye candy animation, great music composed by Randy Newman, and a classic story with some New Orleans flair. The Princess and the Frog is a top-notch movie that I'm glad Disney brought back for 2D animation for a wonderful princess that made me feel seen. Tangled S tier the retelling of Rapunzel has brought magic, adventure, and lots and lots of hair. The hair effects in this movie are phenomenal. The shine, volume, length, it's all an important achievement for animation. Speaking of hair, I love Rapunzel. She's artistic and a free spirit. She wants to explore life outside of the tower because her life hasn't truly begun yet. I like the scene when Rapunzel realized the truth, her stature, and the fact that she wasn't gonna let her kidnapper posing as her mother to take over her life anymore. Fantastic! Mother Gotho can be easily seen as a manipulated mother, which she is. It's established with Mother Knows Best, and Donna Murphy performed greatly. There's something so satisfying with her last moment. At her real age, she's ancient. She has spent Lord knows how many years on this earth and knows this is it for her. With the help of Pascal, she falls to her death and turns into dust. It's my favorite moment of a villain facing defeat. The most handsomest man in Disney history, Eugene Fitzherbert, aka Flynn Rider. I like Eugene because of his humor, charisma, and sharp thinking. I didn't think I would care for a thief like Ryder, but that all changed when he helps Rapunzel see the lights. The scene where they're surrounded by the lights, wow, the colors, the romantic tension, all of it is lovely. The relationship of Rapunzel and Eugene is also done perfectly. It starts off as an exchange of a promise and ended up in a fulfilling relationship where the two have given each other something they'll never forget. Eugene set the bar for men as he was willing to die because he didn't want Rapunzel to continue her life in captivity. I seriously love these two, and I'm happy that they get to be together as their new dream. I also can't describe the happiness I felt when Rapunzel finally came back home. There's a moment of hesitation, processing what they're seeing, and a huge relief that it's real. The king and queen finally have their daughter back. It's a beautiful reunion, and it's inviting to see the queen offering her hand to Eugene as he made their family whole again. I have so much enjoyment from watching this movie. I adore the animation, story, music, and perfect casting. It definitely changed for the good for Disney and CG animation. Tangled will wrap you up with its greatness and a fairy tale ending. Winnie the Pooh B tier This was similar to the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. The 2011 version takes on the stories from the books and adapts them to the movie. Simple story to follow, but the animation adds a nice coat of fresh paint. Everything from the characters, the opening, and Hundred Acre Wood still has the original style with a smoother, brighter, and improved look. It's a harmless movie, but it doesn't matter because I love visiting the Hundred Acre Wood. It's a shame it wasn't a success at a box office, and this was the last 2D movie Disney release. I still think of it as a really good victory for the 2D animators, because some of the 2D supervising animators have worked since the Bronze Era and the Disney Renaissance. I can guarantee you this movie will make you fall in love with the fun shenanigans of a silly old bear named Pooh. Wreck-It Ralph B tier the world building and video game references are brilliant. I love the video games Ralph visits and the extreme detail to the games when it comes to the characters and other aspects. Ralph is an interesting character and has a compelling arc that I thought was displayed wonderfully. Vanilla P is annoying, but that changes when her and Ralph bond together to make her car for her to join the race. I like Fix-It Felix Jr. because of the performance of Jack McBrayer. 
I also enjoy his interactions with Sergeant Calhoun. I love how the characters from Fix It Felix move and dance. The world building of Sugar Rush, Hero's Duty, and the colors and the effects were great. The twist of King Candy being Turbo was nice, but this would also start Disney making twist villains, which didn't get better later in time. Also, the reformed King Candy absolutely scares me. Just no! Wreck-It Ralph pays homage to video games from the past and current, while showing video game characters are more than just the roles they play. Frozen. C-tier. Let's unpack. When I saw it for the first time, I hated it. Watching it again, my opinion changed. It's a fine movie, but it's nothing groundbreaking or on the same levels as the Disney Renaissance. If you think this, please evaluate yourself. So Frozen is inspired by the Snow Queen, yet it's not a true adaptation of it. The cast is good, and the animation does have some great stuff with its snow effects and costumes. Now the parts I didn't like. The story is nothing special, also the music is so-so. The only song I cared about is for the first time in forever. Mainly, I love the sequence of Anna dancing and jumping over famous paintings, and I enjoy seeing her finally being excited to see people, even her own sister. I really adore Anna because she has a fun personality and I can relate to her. Kristoff is fine, Olaf can range from adorable to a nuisance, personally, he's not that bad. Hans was great until his twist, that he was the villain all along. The writer said, Yeah, we can't have Elsa be the villain because family, so let's make the most unexpected character the villain. A twist villain. So Elsa is overrated and a badly written character. The way that they handled her powers, how the trolls and her parents taught her to hide her powers, and her character development was not interesting and terribly displayed. She's a scoop of ice cream with no toppings. Just plain. And the rock trolls were a complete waste of time and did not need a song. I want to get this movie the benefit of the doubt, but Frozen is the subject of massive marketing, all the promoting, and hype. We're breaking charts that didn't need to happen. Also, this movie didn't need to be awarded Best Animated Feature and Best Song from the Academy of Motion Pictures! The people making it, and Disney, really wanted to make this into a cash-flowing franchise, which they succeeded in doing, unfortunately. The code doesn't bother me, but Frozen does in being a very overhyped movie when in reality, it's just average. Big Hero 6 B tier. Harry Bay. The animation is super slick, from the characters, weapons, costumes, and the atmosphere of San Fran Tokyo is all great. The characters are a wonderful bunch, each of them are fantastic in their own ways. My only complaint is the villain. He sucks, and his motives did not match with his actions. That was his mistake! While it does have the elements of a superhero movie, Big Hero 6 also depicts the process of grief accurately. Hiro deals with the loss of Tadashi, and I think it was amazing to have Baymax explain the ways he could help Hiro with his process and giving him a sweet hug. I love the dedication of the animation and story, the love for STEM, the brotherly bond between Hiro and Tadashi, handling a serious topic of grief and loss, and of course, Baymax. Zootopia, B tier. The story is good with the emotional and motivational points. The dynamic of Judy's enthusiasm and Nick's wittiness makes them work well as a duo. Now the animation is something else. I love the different environments Judy sees and the effects of the snow, rain, sunshine, all fantastic. I think the movie was trying their best in exploring racism and prejudice, but it can be a bit messy. Some moments were on the nose, but then you get scenes where Nick confronts Judy after her conference, or the scene when a tiger sits down on the train and a mom bunny brings her child closer to her. Those microaggressions of racism really hit the most. Then the scene where Gideon apologizes to Judy for the things he's done to her when they were kids. It's a big moment to show, and having Gideon's apology be thorough and not a simple I'm sorry speaks volumes. I also love how Zootopia accompanies for other animals to be living and functioning in a society. Well, there could be their homes, vehicles, clothes, etc. And the sheep being the villain was bad. <laughs> While this is not the movie that should be an example in understanding racism and biases, I see Zootopia made an attempt to convey the message on getting along with people from different backgrounds. However, that's not something you could resolve in an hour and 48 minutes. Moana. A tier. Last hurrah for the duo Clemens and Miskers. Hip hip. I'll make sure to have a video on those guys one day. Moana, a majestic movie. I love the setting of the Polynesian islands, the music, the animation, and the ocean. I also appreciate how a majority of the voice cast are from the Pacific Islands. I have a love-hate complication with Maui, mainly because he pees in the ocean when Moana tests the temperature. I found that distasteful. Also, Hey Hey provides nothing to the story. 
The songs are great. Shiny is a bop and the best song ever. My favorite song is How Far I'll Go. It's just a great song on Moana wanting to follow her destiny and embodies the Disney I Want song. What I love about Moana is that she's willing to travel to the ocean to help her people. She's strong-willed, full of adventure, and doesn't back down from anything. Alili Cavallio is a talented actress to play Moana. Her first breakout role and she was perfect. The poetic cinema of Moana walking towards Te Fiti, it's just... From the ocean separating, the music, the slow-mo of Moana walking without showing any ounce of fear. It always makes me stand still and frozen with its execution. What a great way to mark off the wonderful run of Clemens and Mesca's career in directing. They left behind a princess proving the odds on fulfilling her mission and restoring her village and the people going back to their roots as voyagers. This completes the Walt Disney Animation Studios tier list video. It has been a long ride, and it's great that I got to see all these movies. Okay, most of them. I can't wait for the next movie Disney has to offer. Thank you for watching my video. This is Olivia, signing off.